When the power grid fails and the coal starts creeping in, a fire isn't going to be your saving grace. The smoke will give your location away. The light will attract unwanted attention. And eventually, the wood will run out. But your body, now that's a furnace fueled by sheer determination in whatever you can scavenge. Let me break down how to stay alive in the cold using nothing but the principles of physics, some discarded materials, and the unwavering refusal to become a popsicle in a world that couldn't care less. Here's the secret nobody tells you outright. You're already a walking, talking 100-watt heater. Your metabolism is constantly burning calories, converting food into movement, thought, and most importantly, warmth. The issue is that the cold is a relentless thief. It steals your precious heat in three distinct and brutal ways. Conduction, convection, and radiation. Conduction is what happens when you sit on the frozen ground. The earth sucks away your warmth like a vampire. Convection is when the wind whips across your skin, stealing heat faster than you can produce it. And radiation is when your body constantly emits infrared energy into the surrounding environment. It's invisible, but it's deadly. Your main objective isn't to build a roaring bonfire. It's to stop the heat from leaking out. Your first strategy should be to transform your clothing into a wearable sleeping bag. Layering isn't just some piece of fashion advice scrawled in a dead hiker's journal. It's basic physics. Start with a base layer that wicks away moisture. Wet skin is a death sentence because water conducts heat 25 times faster than air. Opt for wool or synthetic fabrics. Cotton is a killer. Next, add an insulation layer. Fleece, down, crumpled newspaper, dry leaves, even minor literal trash can work. Anything that can trap pockets of stagnant air. Air is one of the best insulators on the planet, but only when it's not moving. Moving air is convection, and convection is the enemy. Finally, top it off with a windproof shell. Trash bags, tarps, or that old poncho you found in a gas station dumpster will work. Congratulations, you're now weatherproofed. But here's a trick that most people overlook. Stuff your jacket with extra insulation. Cram crumpled up dry grass, shredded paper, or foam from a torn up seat cushion between your layers. You're not trying to win a fashion contest. You're trying to survive without looking like a total fool. And for the love of everything warm, cover your head. The myth that you lose 90% of your heat through your head is false. But your head is highly vascularized, meaning you lose heat quickly there, which can lead your brain to start making bad decisions like taking off your jacket because you suddenly feel hot. That's hypothermia talking. Don't listen to it. Your second method is to build a debris hut, which is essentially nature's sleeping bag made of trash. No tent, no sleeping bag, no problem. Find a long, sturdy branch to use as your ridge pole. Prop one end up on a tree or a rock, about waist high. Then pile smaller branches along both sides of the ridge pole like ribs on a spine you're essentially building a skeleton. Now comes the fun part, bury it. Use leaves, pine needles, grass, moss, anything organic and dry. Pile it on thick, at least two feet deep. This isn't just a roof, it's insulation, so the more the better. You want it so dense that you can barely see the frame underneath. Crawl inside, it'll be cramped and claustrophobic, and it'll smell like decomposing forest floor. Perfect. That means it's small enough that your body heat will actually warm the space. A well-constructed debris hut can keep you alive in sub-zero temperatures. No fire needed. Pro tip, line the floor with even more debris. Don't lie directly on the ground unless you want conduction to suck the life out of you like a frozen leech. Your third method is the Mylar Burrito, reflecting your heat back at yourself like a thin, crinkled mirror. You know those shiny emergency blankets that come in every cheap survival kit? The ones that look like oversized candy wrappers? Those aren't just gimmicks. They're radiant heat reflectors, and they actually work. Your body constantly radiates infrared heat. Normally, that heat just dissipates into the environment. But when you wrap yourself in mylar, that heat bounces right back at you. It's like being inside a thermos. But here's how to use it correctly. Don't just drape it over yourself like a cape because the wind will shred it. Instead, layer it between blankets or inside your jacket. Use it as a ground sheet to block conduction. Tape it to the walls of your shelter to turn the whole thing into a low-budget sauna. 
If you don't have Mylar, aluminum foil works. So does reflective bubble wrap from a hardware store. Heck, even a car sunshade flipped, shiny side in will do the trick. Science is just expensive trash that actually works. Remember, the cold is a thief, but you control the furnace. Don't just survive, outlast it. Keep it burning. All right, let's keep moving. You're cold and you're running out of options. So listen up. Method four is the water bottle radiator, which is essentially bootleg central heating at its finest. No heater? No problem, you're going to make one. If you have access to any heat source, whether it's a stove, sunlight, or even a car that was running an hour ago, you can pull this off. Find a durable bottle, plastic or metal, and fill it with hot water, but not boiling water. You're not trying to cook yourself. Now wrap that bottle in a sock or a shirt, anything to keep it from burning you, and tuck it into your sleeping bag right up against your core. Boom! You've just built a portable radiator. The best part is that the water will hold heat for hours, far longer than you'd expect. And when it finally cools down, you've got drinking water. Two birds, one bottle. No hot water source? Fine. Use your own body. Fill a bottle with whatever water you have and tuck it against your stomach or in an armpit. Let your core body heat warm it up slowly. Once it's warm, move it down to your feet. You're now a human-powered heat pump, cycling warmth to your extremities without burning a single extra calorie. It's a closed-loop system powered by you. Let's move on to method five, the cardboard cocoon. Don't laugh, cardboard is absolute magic. It's everywhere and it's full of tiny trapped air pockets, which are the secret to insulation. Flatten out some bombs and layer them on the ground under you to stop the cold from seeping into your bones. That's blocking conduction. Tape them over windows to kill drafts. You can even wear it. Seriously, shove it under your jacket like you're wearing medieval armor. Yeah, you'll look ridiculous, but you'll be warm. If you're stuck in a car, this is a game changer. Line the entire interior with flattened boxes and cover the windows. You're building a little cardboard cave inside your vehicle. It's ugly as sin, but it traps your body heat and blocks the wind like a fortress. In any city, cardboard is the duct tape of survival. It's everywhere, so use it. Method six is the huddle. This one's primal. If you're with other people, get close. I don't care if it's awkward, and I don't care if you just met them. The cold doesn't care about your personal space. Huddle up back to back, side by side, share blankets, and share sleeping bags. It's not just a nice idea, it's basic biology. Two people in one sleeping bag will stay warmer than two people in separate bags. Animals know this, penguins do it, wolves do it, you're not above it. And if you're alone, get into the fetal position, knees to your chest, arms wrapped around them, you're minimizing your surface area, and less surface area means less heat escaping into the surrounding environment. And if you have a dog, congratulations. You're sleeping with a one-on-one degree furnace that has its own fur coat. Use it. Now, you might be asking why any of this works better than just making a fire. Fire is great, but fire is fragile. It needs fuel, it needs oxygen, and it needs to be dry. In a storm, in the wet, fire is a luxury. Your body, on the other hand, is a biochemical furnace that runs on fat, carbs, and pure spite. You just have to feed it, hydrate it, and most importantly, insulate it. The secret to survival isn't about generating more heat. You're already a heat factory. The secret is preventing that heat from escaping. You're plugging the leaks. So the night drags on and the cold presses in, but you're not just shivering and hoping. You're layered, you're insulated, and you're huddled. Your core temperature holds and your brain still works. No matches, no problem. You're surviving on physics, trash, and the stubborn refusal to freeze. If you wake up in the morning, you didn't just get lucky, you won.